Good morning and welcome to our reflection series on Ephesians. Bella's taking her new job very seriously. We're going to try to quiet our hearts and our minds so that we can hear what it is that God is saying to us today in these words. That's the covenant we have with God, that he speaks to us presently. Let's just quiet our hearts and minds. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for the ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. I pray, therefore, that you may not lose heart over my sufferings for you. They are your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love i pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This particular chapter, chapter 3, we really get the sense that Paul is indeed writing from prison, right? This is one of his prison letters. And he is saying, this is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. So even though he is in this hard place, he sees the blessing of God and he sees the blessing of God for the church. And he has a very particular vision for the church. He's once again affirming 
that God's vision is universal. He is not choosing one culture over another. He is creating a new humanity and we all belong to him who has redeemed us. So the vision is for all the nations, for the Gentiles to hear this gospel. And it's also has a very interesting, um, uh, very interesting affirmation of the power that we can actually have in Christ Jesus as members of his body. I feel sometimes that when we've entered the church, we've been baptized, that we sometimes feel powerless and hopeless. But that is not what's being said here. And I don't believe that that's what God is saying to us today. God is affirming that he working in us is a powerful thing. And that this is um, an extension of the love that he has for us, right? And we enter that, the, the depth of it and the, the breadth of it, we can enter all of that. And he has this one promise, and I, I think this is very appropriate for our present church culture. And that is that we can comprehend him. We can comprehend him. I feel sometimes like the church is um, a little bit depressed or we as individuals are depressed that, that we hesitate to say that, that God could be met or we hesitate to say that God could be heard or we hesitate to say, you know what, he, he has blessed me in my life. For years, I was a member of the church, but really unschooled. I kind of, I don't know, just wandered in and sat in a pew and, and never really been educated in any sort of way. And I remember sitting there and listening to the sermon and it was all about hearing God. And I'm telling you, if I had ever heard a voice, I would have sought a better doctor. I could not understand what they were talking about. And I really thought, you know, like, this is wackadoodle. You know, if I hear a voice, I am out of here. I'm too freaked out. I cannot handle it. And it took me years to realize that they're speaking in an idiom and a language which points to something else. And so what we have here in the Bible generally, and when we go to it with intention, we have God speaking to our present. And sometimes it's going to seem like one phrase is just perfect for the moment. And you're going to hear it in your own voice. You're not going to hear it in some strange voice. You're going to hear it in your own voice as you're reading it. But there's going to be a profound sense of significance. And as I looked at this today for our present situation, what I think God is truly saying to us is, you know what? I have every intention of letting you comprehend how powerfully and truly I love you and have redeemed you. This might seem repetitive to us, you know, this constant affirmation that you are loved. But there's a time and a place where that's going to sit really deep in your heart. Sometimes it's a time and place in your life where you're broken, where you just cannot, where you are broken, where you have lost everything. And that's where finally you feel that indeed he loves you profoundly. Sometimes he breaks through in our joy when we see the magnificent in life. Sometimes he breaks through when we finally feel gratitude for the things that come together in our life. My dear friends, there is no height or depth 
or a breadth that God will not go to so that you can comprehend him and his love for you. And this prayer that he speaks, that Paul speaks for the church, he still, Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit is praying for us today that we might all be united and that we be strengthened in our inner being with power through his spirit. That's how it's done. He does it for us. It's a matter of relaxing into that beautiful place and just conversing with him who loves you in the depth of your heart. Sometimes just by being happy when nothing around you is particularly happy, but knowing that it comes from him, that he's with you at all times. I hope you noticed that at the very end of Ephesians 3 is what we call the doxology. And we use it at the end of the Eucharistic prayer in the Book of Alternative Services. And so for people who are missing church right now, like myself, missing that movement, missing the people, missing the music, all of that, let me read it to you in this translation. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Now in the church, we would all rise up together in unity and we would all say that together. And it's just the most wonderful thing to speak in unity and, and to, um, to enjoy that. My dear friends, I hope you find for yourselves the blessing that God so truly wishes to pour out upon you. Amen. You did a good job. You did a good job. Yes, you did a good job. You're a beautiful girl.